Another day, another headline we don't want to read. Babysitter and husband arrested after child dies from physical and sexual abuse. How can this happen? And why does it keep happening? Fifty-four percent of our workforce is female, and government targets are for that number to hit 59 percent by 2020. Assuming at least some of these women will have children, who's going to take care of them if mum and dad are working? Daycare centres, right? Or maybe not. With 2.3 million children below the age of four, we would need almost 40,000 childcare centres to handle just half of them. The shocking reality is that we only have 10% of that number officially registered. No one knows exactly how many unregistered daycare providers there are, and that's a problem. Once a centre is registered, they meet minimum standards of the law, which is under the Child Care Centres Act. If you're unregistered, you're putting children at risk immediately. It is going to be very hard to monitor them because we don't know where they are. If there is no proper monitoring, that means they don't comply with having a child protection policy. It is likely that children are going to be more at risk, particularly with physical abuse. This could and does have disastrous consequences. The recent case of 11-month-old baby Zara's death was due to the negligence of an unqualified qualified babysitter sourced from Facebook. And this isn't an isolated case. From June 2016 to June 2017, 581 childcare abuse cases were reported. In just the first half of this year, 199 cases have been reported. Why do we have so many unregistered childcare providers? Firstly, applying to register a daycare centre doesn't necessarily mean you get the go-ahead. Registration requires three sets of approval from the Ministry of Health, the Fire Department and the local council. Even if you past the first two, you could be denied just because your neighbours don't like the idea of having a childcare centre next door. Where the local council uh, approval is needed, that's when uh, it's always stuck in the urban area because a lot of neighbourhood, they don't like the presence of Tasca in, in their midst because they say, you know, there's traffic, when parents can pick up their children and then it's noisy. Many of these approvals have been denied simply because they failed to get neighbours' consent. Secondly, childcare can be an expensive affair. A survey by Free Malaysia Today found that the average cost of daycare was 1,000 ringgit a month per child. If the average household income is around 5,000 ringgit and families have two kids on average, that's 2,000 ringgit a month on childcare. Almost half of a family's total earnings. For many parents, uh, particularly in the B40 and the M40, if they have two or three children, then cost of childcare is extreme. Is why many of them leave their kids with unregistered babysitters because it's a lot cheaper. So the question then is, what kind of quality are you looking at? Because quality childcare comes at premium prices. And before we start picketing outside the neighbourhood, Tasca, it's expensive to run a registered childcare centre. Did you know that one staff member can only handle five toddlers aged one to three? And when it comes to babies below the age of one, that number goes down. Cost of minimum wage now at 1,001 even for a childcare centre with 30 children, you need at least six to seven staff. So you're talking about easily with EPF and SOXO, easily 20,000 just to run a centre for 30 children. That's just staff costs. What about the food costs, stationery, equipment, setting up costs, childcare fixed costs minimum would be at least $500. So if anybody charges lower than that, they are compromising on some particular area of that whole centre, you know, either on the food or either on the curriculum or they just don't do any activities with the kids. Moving on to point number three, the number of trained childcare professionals. We don't have enough of them. As of last June, about 80% of childcare providers in JKM registered nurseries still did not have the minimum qualification, which is the Pomata Early Childhood Care and Education Certificate. Yep, you heard that right. Even if your childcare centre is registered, it's not a guarantee that the staff caring for your child have even the minimum qualification. But do they need it? They're just taking care of kids what? Wrong. Qualified childcare professionals are vital. They're trained to safely and appropriately handle children at all the different stages of their cognitive development. If you want to have a mature, well-adjusted human being, you need to do all this within the first five years of the child's life because that's when the emotions and the cognitive levels are fastest. You need specialised knowledge, you have to understand the ages and stages of development of a child, so it's extremely important for them that they get 
uh, themselves uh, qualified and certified. All right, so we have thousands of unregistered and underqualified childcare centers and babysitters, and really only the T20 can afford the safe alternatives. So what's the solution? For one, a screening system is being set up right now so that parents can do a background check on potential babysitters. We are working together with the courts, the police, and also the prison ministry to ensure that we do screening for anyone working with children the employers or even the parents will be able to come to our ministry and just do a quick check to ensure this person have no prior conviction. Our government also announced the allocation of 10 million ringgit for childcare centres in budget 2019. Yay! That means 50 new childcare centres in government agencies like hospitals and police stations. There's also a few government subsidies already in place to help with childcare, one for civil servants and one for eligible Selangor residents. That's all great news. But what about the private sector? We have to start it with our own government sector first. Uh, I always feel that if we fail to do it within our own government agencies, we, we lack the authority to go out and tell the private sector, this is how you do it. Hmm. We need the corporate sector. If you want the women to work, please either set up a childcare centre within your own centre or give a subsidy to your staff as a benefit to send to registered childcare centres. Without the subsidy, many parents struggle. And we really need to think bigger than that anyway, especially in low-income areas. Instead of the childcare centre being set up, we can have trained people who are trained in early childhood to go out to empower the people within the community to be able to take better care of the children. Because at the moment, to them, as long as I feed the child and I let the child sleep, you know, that's enough. Speaking of community, guess what? When it comes to child abuse, you're part of the solution too. Family members, school teachers, relatives, volunteer groups, you know, have a duty to report when you know of such abuses. Don't, don't just keep quiet and think it will go away. It will not go away. Neighbours hearing, you know, constant crying should report. We have a Talian Kase 15999 uh, that we encourage people to make calls. It's better to be wrong than to be late in rescuing a child. We all know that policy can take years to implement, but our children can't wait. Thankfully, the Ministry of Women, Family and Community Development have just launched a guide to choosing childcare, because as a parent and as a consumer, you must do your part to keep your children safe. Some examples of things to look out for are the childcare provider's attitude and character. Do they maintain good eye contact? Are they friendly and responsive? Next, is the environment safe? Look out for hazards like sharp objects, drowning risks, and unhygienic areas. There's a whole bunch of other things to look out for and you can check out the full guide on the ministry's website and social media pages. You're also well within your rights to turn up for random spot checks and always pay attention to any physical or emotional changes in your child. And remember, your babysitter should constantly pass all the checks on the list, not just the first time you visit. If you do notice anything amiss, trust your gut and look for a better childcare provider. Despite the headlines, it's important for us not to demonize childcare care providers. Not all babysitters are negligent and cruel, but we need to learn to recognize the signs and act on them, whether you're a parent or just a neighbor. After all, it takes a whole village to raise a child. Thanks so much for watching News Flash. If you like this topic, why not check out our episode on maternity leave? If you like all kinds of other topics, have you seen last week's topic on ICERD? Um, Comment of the week comes from Lionelson Yong. He said, if ICED gets rejected, I hope Malaysians would at least make their own policy on how racial equality can be carried out in this country without abolishing the native special rights. Thank you for commenting. The rest of you guys, please comment and tell us what you think about this video and what we should do about childcare in this country.